Hi, it's Jessica Damasa with WTF Health. I'm here at HIC 2019 in the Heise studio, and joining me right now, I have Ushi Schreiber. She is the EY Fellow for Digital Society and Innovation. That's right. What a cool digital society. I love that. So what, is, what, what, is, what are you doing here at a healthcare conference in Australia in particular? <laughs> so what this is about is really to raise awareness around how much the world is changing as a result of technology and in particular what impact it has really on every aspect of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we communicate different, we have relationships differently as a result of technology, you know, social media and so on. Obviously, it's changing every industry. Every industry is turning into a technology industry, including healthcare. Right. And so having worked across the world uh, on some of those issues, I'm now relocated back in Australia, which is awesome. Yes. Uh, but one of my roles really is to... I suppose, you know, engage with business, with government, with community, with citizens on this question about what does the Australia of the future look like? And obviously healthcare is a very crucial component of all of that. Okay, well, I'm going to turn that on you. What does the Australia of the future look like? Well, I think the Australia of the future, if we do it right, needs to first of all uh, recognize that we can no longer rely just on our natural resources and services mm -hmm. economy. Uh, there needs to be a transformation of that, right? And right. so that means really that needs to be reflected in our education system. And it is, of course, to a degree already, although, you know, we could do much better if we compare ourselves to some of our peers. Uh, it's a question of ease of doing business. How easy is it to get up new businesses to really drive innovation? It's a question of our R&D investment. How much investment do, do we actually need in order to stay ahead of the game? So it's from, for the economy, it's from a social perspective, and then importantly, I suppose, it's from a perspective about, you know, what do we want our lives and our society to look like? All right, so help me understand on those on those elements that you just listed there. You have a, like a worldly perspective on this. So where does Australia fall in, fall into the mix? Like how would you grade them in terms of having that sure. ecosystem, that that investment ecosystem, having the you know the the internal um, human capacity yeah. to do some of these things? I mean, how would you grade them? So we know what the key success factors for a digital society are, right? Mm -hmm. There are some of the things I've talked about. So it's things like trust, where Australia is kind of placed somewhere in the middle of the OECD countries because obviously these comparators are uh, published, right? Sure. So you have OECD, you have World Bank, you have IMF, you have a whole range of established sources for that kind of information. On ease of doing business, we've actually gone backwards. On educational outcomes, in particular in math and science in the PISA study, we've gone backwards. On participation in the VET sector, um, so retraining and so on, we've sure. gone backwards. Mm. On a key indicator, which is really about uh, diversity, which you really want lots of in the context of driving innovation, gender diversity, certainly the gender gap is growing. So I guess what I'm telling you is that on many of the indicators sure. against our peers, we are going backwards. And unfortunately, we've also gone back in terms of some of the important infrastructure issues. So, for example, you need high-speed fixed-line internet access. Mm -hmm. uh, we are number 58 in the world. Uh, we are way behind any country that is comparable to our economy and our, the maturity of our economy. So we've got a lot of work to do if we actually want to propel ourselves forward. So one of the challenges for Australia is always, you know, we've got a great life here. You look at where we currently are and it seems like we're doing okay. Yeah. But the rest of the world is also moving because technology is moving so sure. rapidly. And so we really need to come up with a bit of a plan. And hence, I'm keen to engage with business, with government, with citizens, with NGOs and so on on this conversation. What is our strategy for going forward? And, you know, healthcare is obviously a crucial part right. of that industry framework. So where do you where do you start? And I mean, I guess before that, is it possible to recover from this? I mean, if you're already behind on things, so it is possible to recover. So where do you start? Is there is there one area where you're like, okay, if we just start here, then everything kind of falls into place in terms of an agenda for tackling this? Well, I mean, first of all, I would say, you know, of course, we're not alone in this. There is no um, recipe roadmap established at this point in time for any country around sure. the world. So everybody's grappling with the same kind of questions. So I think that's why I don't think it's a tragedy. I also think Australia has so much to offer in terms of an educated population. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very fast on technology uptake generally as individuals. Uh, and, and obviously also in terms of, you know, some of the innovation that takes place, even if the conditions mightn't always be ideal for some of this. And obviously in healthcare, we've seen a lot of that, right? right? I mean, absolutely punching above our weight as a country in terms of some of the, uh, the research and development work that's 
that's been undertaken and then picked up elsewhere. So, so I think that's important. But I think one key point that, um, you know, from a broader perspective, uh, we really need to focus on is the whole issue about uh, improving the vet sector, the, the uh, training sector, uh, because we are seeing, of course, like everywhere else, job losses as a result of automation. Yes. And so one of the challenges is we need to actually retrain people quite rapidly and have a bit of a plan about how this moves forward. So, so I think that's an important priority. But I really think, I mean, you know, there's a lot of awareness among people in business, in particular in the business world around these issues. There's awareness rising among government leaders, uh, you know, in the bureaucracy as well as at the political level. And I think it is a question of really bringing people together and having that dialogue. And that's what I'm doing. Specifically in healthcare, uh -huh. I mean, where is Australia faring there in terms of, you know, um, those key metrics that you might look at in terms of digital transformation in healthcare or even just, you know, comparable against peer I mean, I, I know, I mean, I'm from the U.S., and so there are definitely things that are different here and different issues that are being focused on than, you know, in the U.S. or in Europe or in Japan or, you know, wherever. So what, from your perspective, what are you seeing that's different here in Australia and, and how the healthcare system is moving along in its terms of progressing? I mean, so the first point is, of course, that we have a universal healthcare system in Australia, which mm -hmm. is a great advantage to your home country, Absolutely. right? Which, you know, doesn't <laughs> really have that. And that obviously has quite detrimental impacts in many ways. Right. But, um, you know, you know, it is interesting. I mean, I think, you know, I've just been away for eight years and have just returned to Australia. One of the things I see is that, you know, there's still a lot of the similar conversations within the healthcare system around, you know, the silos, the professional groupings, all those kind of issues. But the reality is, I think what has changed the most is probably the consumer. Because the consumer is using technology now day to day, be that social media, be that wearables, be that their Apple Watch, sure. be that their Fitbit or whatever. And I think the mindset there has changed quite dramatically that they see themselves as their key healthcare manager. And you know, we're gonna see many, many more examples of that and much more of that direction uh, to take place. So I think, you know, clearly um, the healthcare system needs to recognize that. And so, you know, I think healthcare is really shifting from a paradigm where I suppose the thinking was really that, you know, the clinician is the authority uh, to one where uh, the clinician actually becomes the guide. Uh, from a model where I think, you know, a lot of information was kind of captured in a lot of different buckets to one where we're really now leading to start to look at big data. Uh, I think it definitely is a model where people used to look very much at populations or groups, uh, whereas technology forces us to really put uh, the individual and, at, at the center and right. come up with a more personalized approach to healthcare and so on. So I think those shifts are all very much underway. And I think Australia has obviously in various ways invested in some of the underpinning infrastructure understanding that it always feels like there never is enough money for any right. of this. Um, so, you know, I think I think on the one hand there is progress, but I think the real change will happen once people in healthcare uh, and, you know, in politics realize that it's actually the consumer that's going to vote with their feet and that's the consumer that will be at the center of it and that some of the very big tech companies like Apple, Amazon, Microsoft and so on, they are all looking at disrupting healthcare as as trillion dollar markets and they come from a perspective of consumer first collaboration integration uh, you know rather than from a dispersed model which is really the history of the healthcare system so you know my sense is a lot of change has been made a lot of progress has been made a lot more needs to happen but I think technology is now actually driving some of that even if not everyone in the healthcare system is yet recognizing it in the, in the way that technology is approaching this, and this is like that Silicon Valley, like move fast and break things kind of mentality that's kind of coming sure. over here now, actually expanding worldwide with those big tech companies driving more forcefully into healthcare. Do you think that tech is failing healthcare in any way? Um, are they pushing too hard? Are they focusing on the wrong things? I mean, is there any way that you feel that the technology, you know, it, it's not understanding the nuances of healthcare, that oftentimes the clinicians are, are or the, the established healthcare incumbents are the first to say, well, wait, 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 you have to, you know, all the regulations, you have to make sure that the patients are protected, all of those things. I mean, what, what's your opinion on that? Well, I don't know if it's tech failing us. I think it's more, 
whether the whole ecosystem of all the players that make up healthcare actually communicate properly and understand its, their various <laughs> viewpoints properly. That's a and great that's point. always been a challenge in health, right? Yeah. I mean, health is made up of so many different professional groups. You know, we've always talked about how people in healthcare are tribal. So, you know, if you are, you know, an allied health professional, you kind of see the world in a certain way and that's different to how you might see it if you're a nurse or a doctor or whatever. So, I mean, you know, or a technologist. That's right. always been the issue, I think. Uh, but I think in some ways, technology actually has the potential to drive some of the cultural change that, you know, strategy or top-down transformation or whatever hasn't been able to drive. Right. Uh, because in some ways, when you think about social media platforms and so on, I mean, they actually do connect people in, in a way across systemic boundaries Absolutely. or professional boundaries. And so I think a lot of what we're seeing will actually be technology driving some of the change rather than, you know, somewhere someone making a decision and saying we need cultural change in healthcare. Um, because, you know, that's hard and, you know, that's not easily achieved. And none of it is easy. None right. of it is easy. And I think we have to understand that that's not unique to healthcare either. It's very no. difficult for every industry at this point in time to make that transition. But in some ways, I think the transition that technology is bringing is actually being more connected, being more individual focused, being more personalized, being more collaborative. And that's something that kind of also is in the nature of healthcare. So I think it'll be good. Ushi, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us. It's insightful to hear somebody, especially who hasn't lived in Australia for a while, come back and share your insights. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health here at HIC 2019 in the Heise studio. Thanks so much for joining us.